and those who believe that it hasn't already passed yet, we get to look for the things that Jesus told us to look for. And so we see there in Matthew, the, the scripture was quoted, Jeremiah, not all of the scripture has been fulfilled just yet. Let's look at Joel chapter 2. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. So here is what Joel said was going to happen in the last days. And there's a whole list of things that Joel said was going to happen. Now let's look to the partial fulfillment of this in Acts chapter 2. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. This is the day of Pentecost. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in this, those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall, be called, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, I read all that to do this. We know for a fact, Joel prophesied, we know for a fact that Peter, led by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, said this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Now, here's the thing. We know that the Spirit was poured out upon those disciples and, and upon us here in the latter days. We know that to be true. But, there are some things that Joel said was going to happen that haven't happened yet. What are they? Well, number one, the wonders in heaven above and signs in earth beneath. Those haven't happened yet. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Those things were not manifested on the day of Pentecost. You don't see about them anywhere in the New Testament. It didn't happen then. The sun was not turned into darkness, and the moon was not turned into blood. You say, well, those are metaphors. Dr. So-and-so at So-and-so Theological Seminary said these are metaphors in his commentary and blah, blah, blah. Well, well, I just believe that God said that these things were going to happen. And here again, when you allow a man to dictate to you an interpretation of the Word of God, that man is going to be wrong. God is going to make that man a liar because only God can be true 100% of the time. The sun shall be turned into darkness, moon into blood. Those things did not take place. So what are you saying, Brother Mike? There's going to be another outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Absolutely. There is a second outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the last days. And don't believe Rod Parsley and Creflo Dollar and these other charismaniacs who are saying that this new outpouring of the Holy Spirit is what they're experiencing in their churches. It's a lie and it's a setup, folks. Be very, very afraid and stay away from these false prophets. The second outpouring of the Holy Spirit is going to be associated exactly with what God said it was going to be associated with. There are going to be signs, vapors of smoke, there's going to be fire, the sun is going to be turned to darkness, and the moon is going to be turned into blood before that. And what is the second outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Who does it fall on? Let's look at, and this is, we're going to, we're going to kind of mix some typology into this, and a little apocalyptic language, and a little Bible numerics into this passage that we're going to see. Take a look at 2 Kings chapter 2. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, this is typology, Elijah represents the Gentile church. Why? Because he was taken up into heaven without dying. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that's what they call the rapture. Some people don't like that term because it wasn't in the Bible. Okay, if you want to call it the, the transformation, if you want to call it the, uh, the translation, which is what the King James calls it, that's fine. But it's going to happen because God said it was going to happen. And Elijah is a type of the Gentile church. And he's taken up into heaven by a whirlwind. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, and said I pray let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. You see, Elisha was not taken up 
into heaven by the whirlwind. He's here. And he receives a double portion of the spirit of Elijah. And what spirit was that that was on him? The Holy Spirit of God. He says in verse 10, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. What is he saying here? That this second outpouring of the Holy Spirit takes place after the translation or at the time of the translation of the Gentile church. It is a prophecy in waiting. And it's waiting for a specific event to take place. And that event is the translation of the Gentile church in the last days. And what's going to happen is that God's going to take us, the, His church, the Gentiles, into heaven. And then God is going to once again begin to restore all of His promises that He made to the seed of Ab Abraham, Israel, in the last days. And He's going to give them of His Spirit. Look at Isaiah chapter 40. Look at, look at the language. This is apocalyptic language. This is Bible numerics, the number two. And this is the prophecy of the second outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon Israel. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 1. Comfort ye, comfort ye. Look, it's mentioned twice. God speaks once, yea, twice. And He says, comfort ye. What does the word comfort relate to in the Bible? The word comfort is a Holy Ghost term. Jesus said, I will send you the comforter, the Holy Ghost. Look at this passage. See, I'm getting happy when I talk about this. Comfort ye, comfort ye. The twice outpouring of the Holy Spirit of God. My people, saith your God, that's Israel, speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. You see, my friend, I'm not one of these replacement theologians. I'm not one of these guys that hates Israel so much that I say, well, now I'm Israel. I'm a Jew. I am Israel by adoption. But I am not Israel by birth. And the promise was made to the seed of Abraham. Jesus' own brethren, Israel, is who he came to die for. And die for them he did. And his promises are that he is going to restore them in the last days. And he is going to pour out his spirit upon them. And he's going to forgive all of their iniquity. And he's going to pardon all of their transgressions. And the latter day outpouring of the Holy Spirit is going to be on them. And they shall dwell in his kingdom. Remember the story. Bible typology, and yet a prophecy. In Ezekiel, the Ezekiel said, Son of man, prophesy to these bones, these dry bones. If you look at our, our video on DNA, Jesus Christ DNA and the Holy Bible, I talk about the, the bones representing the temple of God where he dwells in. And he prophesied to the bones and they came together. And flesh joined on them and they, were, and they, were, they, were, they looked like human bodies. But there was no breath in them. And what is that breath? That breath is the Holy Spirit. And so God says, Ezekiel, prophesy. You see, that could be the fulfillment of 1947 where Israel was joined back together into the land. But there's something that hasn't happened yet. They're not alive. And so he said, Son of Man, prophesy to the four winds. Four Bible numerics. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Prophesied to the four winds that they come. and be, See, what happened to you when you got saved? What happened when you got saved? The four winds breathed life into you. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You believed in the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus Christ. You believed in that. And God gave you new life. That's what's going to happen to Israel. He said that these bones are the whole house of Israel. They represent the temple of God, Israel. And God is going to breathe life into them once again in the last days. So that's our understanding of direct prophecies. Go now and read Isaiah. Go read Jeremiah. Go read Obadiah. Go read 
Habakkuk, I mean, how would you feel if you walked through the gates of Pearl in New Jerusalem and there you were shaking hands with all the saints and you met Habakkuk? And Habakkuk said, did you read my book? And you said, uh, no, I didn't, Habakkuk. Go read Habakkuk. Read it again. Read it again. Read Malachi. Read Micah. Read these prophecies in the Old Testament and know that they're going to take place. Their perfect fulfillment awaits a latter day's happening. I hope you've enjoyed this teaching on direct prophecies. We have more to come. Be watching uh, our ministry for word on these, www.mikehoggard.com. Pass these videos around. Get these into the hands of people that need to know things that are going to happen in the last days. And let's all be prepared and let's all be ready. And let's be students of the pure word, the sure word of prophecy, the Holy Bible. This is Pastor Mike saying God bless you.